This is the Shadowcoin River. It flows through the center of Jamestown, New York. It's been a river that's been used for the longest time to power the factories in the region, and unfortunately also to drag away pollutants and contaminants that were the result of industry that was here. Really, no one has ever done a survey or study of everything that's around that area. That's something that researchers from the Roger Tory Peterson Institute of Natural History are changing by taking a closer look at the Shadowcoin River. And they're coming to a refreshing conclusion. It is thriving with all sorts of life and it's vibrant, not only because of the species that are living within it and around it, but also with just all the human activity and life that is around it as well. This is the only real tree corridor in the city. So in the spring when the warblers are migrating through, you come down here and just, just see species after species. Of the many species in the Shadowcoin, one really sticks out as bizarre, the spiny soft shell turtle. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, let's go upstream, where the Shadowcoin begins at the Chautauqua Lake outlet. <laughs> These students, they're getting a bit out of their comfort zone. It's a turtle trap. We put it there yesterday because we saw a lot of the like, turtles in this area, so we were hoping we can be able to catch them and examine them and tag them. One thing to know about snapping turtles is they have a really long neck, and they can reach back to about half of their shell. Oh, oh, so anything, yeah. anytime you put your fingers in the front half of the shell, you're in a danger zone. These high school students are being paid to be here. It's their summer job to begin collecting lots of data about the river. So far, they've found 58 species of bird, five kinds of turtle, two snakes, five amphibians, and 40 species of dragonfly and damselfly. All of this is the foundation of a multi-year study, assessing the overall health of the river. We're really trying to make the natural aspects of this river more of a community asset and try to figure out how to best do this without damaging the river and or the species that live in it. Developing the Shattacoin into a community asset requires decision making from many stakeholders. And these students are helping guide those decisions with science. I feel they've come a long way since they started. They started off really quiet and calm. Now they're like eager to do like anything. Like if you tell them to go jump in the water, they'll just jump in the water. Much of the Shadowcoin River looks like this foundations of factories. And a lot of this is being taken back over by nature. In some cases, local species are thriving in this environment. It's an example of how appearances can be deceiving. Like this flower. Looks great, right? Turns out it's an invasive species. One of several that are threatening native species along the river. No matter what way you look at it, these environments are complicated. All this nature that was lost to development. Now, there's a longing for nature to be reintroduced into our urban environments. But if not engineered properly, these developments can cause more harm than good. Put a lawn right up to a river's edge, for example, and the shore, it'll continue to erode away. You build something that you like, but doesn't necessarily fit with the prevailing conditions, nature will take care of it, it'll disappear again, and you're going to have to rebuild it over and over again. So that's where that science comes in. You can enjoy nature and you can learn things, and as long as you can find the right variables and learn the right things and build the right foundation, you can build some pretty amazing things. I'd love to see an infrastructure where people, first of all, go out and see the river, enjoy it, and hike along the river, bike along the river, take their kayaks out, go fishing, do whatever it is that they want to do but have built in the areas where we can highlight certain natural aspects of it. As long as there have been cities, there have been rivers flowing through those cities. Rivers become ingrained in the city's DNA and culture. People are proud of their rivers. And in the case of the Shadowcoin River, there's a lot to celebrate, including the mysterious spiny soft shell turtle. There 
Muppets. They're the oddest looking creature that you could probably ever find. These turtles are at the fringes of their habitat and are a special concern species in New York State. But for some reason, this section of the Shadowcoin has a stronghold of the reptiles. You can see them everywhere. Their floppy, pancake-like shells, snout noses, and prehistoric-looking flippers. They're big turtles and can live to be in their 50s and 60s. Whatever we've created here, you know, whatever this habitat is that's been made by man, it seems to work for them. This is the only place in all of New York State where you can find enough of these turtles to actually learn something about them. And there's a lot to wonder about them. Like, are spiny softshell nests hatching successfully? Or have these turtles just been here for a long time? Are they able to cross the dams, found both upstream and downstream from their stronghold? With the help of people, could their numbers be increased? And would that even be a good idea? The problem is this. You see, spiny softshell turtles, they're, they're not like your run-of-the-mill snapping or painted turtles. They seem to be especially smart and sneaky. They're very difficult to catch. Even though these students have had no problem catching other species of turtle, they can't seem to catch a single spiny softshell. They definitely seem to be wary of the traps. They're really fast. A lot of the students have been trying to like net them, and that's, <laughs> that's kind of a fool's errand. You're not, you're not going to sneak up on them. So yeah, these spiny softshell turtles, they're going to be mysterious for now. There's so many questions, and it seems like, you know, we, we come down here with all these questions and then we leave with more. I was always interested in, you know, biology and nature and animals, but there's stuff down here that I never knew existed. The Shadowcoin River has been a driving feature of the city of Jamestown for hundreds of years, and it will continue to be important moving forward, but for very different reasons. I definitely think it's important to let nature come back, you know, naturally speaking, but also let it in to yourself. It's our own backyard. It's, it's a lifeline of sorts to the people and everything else that lives here. I love that I can see through the veneer thin, crumbling infrastructures and pollution and invasives and see what's still there. And I want, to, I want other people to see that too.